What's up, guys? Uh, welcome back to the Tech Tony podcast. As usual, this podcast is also recorded live also. So uh, if you want to watch the live version, go to my YouTube channel, Tech Tony, and check, out, check us out talking. And what I mean by us, I have a guest today. It's not just me yapping my head off. Um, I have Austin Armstrong here. This guy I've been following him for quite a bit on TikTok is where I met him. He does have YouTube and other channels you can find him. He also does run his own uh, digital marketing company as well. And he's gonna pretty much take the show today. We'll talk a bit about SEO, talk touch base on a few other topics as well. But for the most part, um, Austin, please introduce yourself, man, and tell people about you, your company, and where they can find you. Yeah, firstly, thanks so much for having me on, man. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure. We've been connected on TikTok for a little bit now. Uh, you also have great stuff going on, so compliments to you. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I run a full-service digital marketing agency called Socialty Pro. We do everything from SEO, TikTok management, video production, um, consulting, um, email marketing, you name it. Uh, we pretty much do it. We've had a lot of experience. So I personally have been doing digital marketing for about 15 years. Uh, started back on MySpace of all places when I was really a, MySpace. Man. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, start. I, I got bit by the bug when I was about fourteen, and uh, realized this is what I was meant to do with my life. So I uh, kind of just kept going with it, uh, mostly behind the scenes for a very long time. So MySpace, you know, kind of got bit by that little, you know, influencer, whatever you want to call it back then. I don't even think that term was uh, was around then. Um, but definitely I was behind the scenes for, for many, many years, just run di director of marketing for a couple companies before I started my own company and, uh, TikTok's been, uh, not just up and coming, but booming, uh, the last year and a half particularly. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, I jumped all in at one point and we can kind of get into that story if you want, or we can kind of go down uh, the SEO route too. Uh, but I kind of became that SEO guy on uh, on TikTok because it was a uh, untapped place, and uh, it's it's been a blast. So uh, yeah, if anybody wants to check me out, Social T Pro across the web. Definitely something you didn't mention there, which I did see a short TikTok you did about, was technically speaking, you're a small business, correct? I am. Yeah. And for small growing quick. Yeah, and for and for growing quick, yeah. Uh, but you're, you're labeled as a small business. For small businesses, social media is a huge, huge platform important for them. Um, you actually lost your job due to COVID, correct? I did. Tell us a little yeah. about that. You just, you just went into it, man. Yeah. So um, it, it was honestly the best thing that's ever happened to me. And it, it's kind of a, a cliche entrepreneur story, but it, it's, it, in my opinion, it's pretty cool. So um, I, I moved out from California to North Carolina uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, I was working entirely remote for about six months. So I beat, uh, I beat COVID by six months uh, <laughs> before transitioning <laughs> entirely to remote. So I had a little bit of head start on, on some people. And uh, about six months ago, seven months ago now, uh, I got let go. From, uh, from my job. I was a, a director of marketing or digital marketing for a substance abuse treatment center. I was there for a long time. Um, COVID, you know, hit and there were some issues there and they laid me off. In the meantime, I had been running my agency with my business partner part-time, uh, very part-time, very side gig, a uh, little extra income here and there. Um, it was very slow uh, growing at first. Uh, and then, you know, when, when I got laid off, uh, I had that quintessential entrepreneurial moment of, do I try and find another job in the middle of a pandemic where there's no in-person interviews in place, yeah. or do I go all in and bet on myself? And I bet on myself. I went all in, uh, and I went all in specifically on TikTok. Uh, and in a matter of about two months, everything escalated, everything completely blew up. And I'm now from, a, I went from a team of uh, three people to we just brought on our eighth team member yesterday. We're growing insanely quick. It's thanks to TikTok. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. It really is. Like you and several other businesses that I've met with and had a chance to talk to, TikTok 
for either one, two things, either help them grow or save their business. Yeah. Um, from going on there, one of them being uh, a blue corn tortilla company. I don't know if you look at them. Wow. Up. Yeah, two kids, uh, just a little bit younger than us. I say kids. I don't hold you. I'm in my 30s. But um, <laughs> uh, I know they're pretty young. And they started at a tortilla company in the middle, in the middle of pandemic, lost a lot of their rest their, their main clients over restaurants. And so they started a website, started TikToking, and then they, they ship out hundreds of tortillas a day it's because amazing. of TikTok videos. It's amazing. It's an unta- I, I didn't mean to kind of take this conversation towards TikTok. We, we can, we'll pivot into uh, to SEO. It's just such a big part of my story right now. But it is such an uh, uh, amazing platform. And no matter what your business is, whether you're in a marketing agency, a business professional, or you're developing corn chips, there is an opportunity there for you to succeed, grow, and change your life. Definitely. Definitely. I know. So that. So hopefully some business owners will listen to this and be like, okay, I need to start making my own video, video stuff. You start making, the, just make videos um, as it is. Um, but one of the most important things that's so sorely misunderstood is uh, what Austin, oh, I see him specializing a lot, is SEO and SEO tips. Um, now for a lot of business owners, that, for a lot of people that follow me, as particularly my YouTube channel, I talk, there's two types of SEO. And Austin, correct me if I'm wrong, there's on-site, off-site SEO, correct? Uh, what form do you like to use personally yourself? Do you, or do you specialize in one particularly or do you do both? Definitely on-site uh, SEO. So I have more technical uh, person on my team that handles a lot of the technical side of things. My specialty is really focusing on content, uh, content-oriented SEO. Working with you as the business owner, the expert that you are, cross-referencing that. Uh, we have an onboarding process. So uh, cross-referencing that uh, with our onboarding process, with uh, keyword research, of course, as well as looking at opportunities, crafting brilliant content around that based on what's already ranking. So a lot of it goes into competitor research as well. Uh, And then just knocking out of the park, staying consistent, creating better content than what's already ranking. Um, Yeah, there's a lot of optimization tips that go into it, but definitely on-page SEO focused. Cool. See, that, that's the thing that for that I mentioned to a lot of business owners is they know the term SEO and they'll, they'll come to me, oh yeah, we have someone doing SEO. And the first thing I ask them is, well, what type of SEO? And they give yeah. you that blind look. Mm-hmm. Because sadly in our industry, uh, there's, a, there's all these digital marketers that, that they'll say, oh, I'll do your SEO for you. But they don't, a business owner has to follow that second question. What type are you doing for me? Is yeah, on site or off site, and the difference between a market knows what he's doing, a market that pretends is they know what tech they're doing. That's one of the reasons why uh, I've enjoyed following uh, Austin because he's actually displayed that skill set and separated the differences between the two. Um, Austin, if you don't mind, uh, go and go over your, your favorite tips. I know you talk a lot about Uber Suggest. Is is Neil Patel sponsoring you by chance? Because you're always no, talking. but that dude, that dude should pay me. Uh, for how much uh, traffic that uh, Neil, if you're watching, if you're listening to the Tech Tony podcast, sponsor Socialty Pro. Um, no, the the reason I I, I highlight Uber Suggest so much is when whenever I do a um, a review of a website that's not free, the comments come in. It's not free. That costs money every month. You know, because nobody wants to spend any money on anything until they have money coming in. So in my opinion, Uber Suggest is definitely the best free tool that gives you the most amount of free information. That's why I talk about it all the time. It's True. a free resource that people can jump into and get a lot of really good data. True. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I use Uber Suggest, like I said, I'm not an SEO guy, but I use it. For- I, I personally use, a, sorry to cut you off, but I, I personally use Ahrefs. Um, that's why I, you know, I pay that monthly. It gives, oh. <laughs> it gives you way more, way more data, but I, I can't, I can't, it, I have a much harder time promoting uh, a service that, you know, is going to cost them a hundred bucks a month when they're a small business owner and they want everything for free. Well, I know you talked about spy food and uh, I've talked about all of them. Yeah. Spy food is pretty good too. I actually pay for spy food. Oh, Uh, do you? Yeah. Yeah. So, which uh, I've, I've done a couple of TikTok videos too. got the same exact response. Like they're, they block me. There's a paywall. I'm like, well, yeah, there's a paywall. I mean, but you at least get top, was it five results? Um, Mm-hmm. Or Google Ads, Spy Food gives you the top um, performing Google Ads for our industry or a keyword, which really helps with copywriting. So, <clears throat> kind of a little bit of a, of a cheat sheet for people trying to do their own Google Ads. Use Spy Food; it'll help you uh, with copywriting. 
But with, with SEO, um, with the, you said on-site SEO, just uh, once again, explain, explain to people what that is, why it's important, and like some tips that they can start implementing themselves if, if they have to. If they can't afford to hire a professional. What can they do themselves to just get it started? Because uh, as of this recording uh, today, I don't know if you follow Google on Twitter, uh, their core, their yearly core update does launch today. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Well, it's going to be interesting uh, to see what happens there. Uh, but yeah, to answer your question, the difference between on-site and off-site SEO, on-site is everything that you're doing on your own website versus off-site is what you're doing uh, on other websites, business listings, social signals, stuff like that, getting backlinks that link from other resources back into your website. So on-site SEO is, um, to kind of uh, backtrack a little bit, just because you have a website created doesn't mean that people are going to find you online. True you that. have to optimize that. Um, you have to optimize your content to be found for what people are searching for uh, online, including your brand. Um, just because you have a, a, a website around your brand or the domain doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to find you immediately. Over time, they will. So on-site SEO, um, basically you have your homepage, right? And then you have individual deeper level pages on there. So you have your service-based pages, uh, maybe you have a blog as well. And what I'd recommend is each, uh, you wanna create individual pages around every service that you offer. If you're a local-based business, optimizing that content around the service area that you are in. Um, and then creating complementary uh, blog articles uh, around frequently asked questions. So if you can, um, a good practice that I like to do with, with clients is we mark down the 25 most frequently asked questions that uh, clients ask them. And then we cross-reference that with uh, keyword research on a tool. You could use, um, does SpyFu have a keyword research tool? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you could use a tool like SpyFu or Ubersuggest or Ahrefs or SCMrush is another one as well to cross-reference those frequently asked questions with what uh, keywords and monthly search volume that uh, those questions have, the uh, most related uh, term there. And then what you wanna do is create really good content around that. So if there's a one particular keyword um, uh, that, you've, that you've found, um, you wanna break that down into you know, a lengthy 1,000 word, 1,200 word, article answering everything about that particular keyword, that particular search phrase or uh, service that you offer. And there's all sorts of technical, that's the, that's the baseline there, but there's all sorts of technical stuff like internal linking, you want pages to link from one page to another page to another page, and you can kind of get into pillar strategy if you want to. But at the end of the day, focus on what you do, what your customers are searching for, and craft really good content around all of those things. That's really good that you bring up a point. Um, a lot of biz owners, when they say, I don't know what to talk about. Well, I'm like, well, how long have you been in business? 10 years. Okay, what are the top 10 things you already know someone's gonna ask you when you, go, when you show up to a site or you're taking a phone call? And they'll, they'll spit out questions almost immediately. Um, at least five off the top of their heads and about five more when to write a few things down. I'm like, oh, there you go. There's your blog topics. <laughs> start, exactly. start answering the questions. And they, they kind of get this, this look of like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you can make a video about that. You can, that's a blog. Um, something I've always thought was interesting was title tags. Mm -hmm. uh, do you mess with those? Or do yeah. you work on those? Yep. Definitely uh, having, <clears throat> having proper title tags uh, definitely helps, helps out as well. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I know everything about SEO. I know enough to look at a site and be like, oh, that's wrong. Why, why does it say water heaters, but your title tag says homepage? Like, oh, <laughs> get it right, folks. And the funny thing is um, that style of work will actually affect your ads. So we have, a, we have a, a, a score called a quality score on Google Ads. And if, I'm, if I am sending traffic to a particular part of your site, as if that website reflects the search term as close as possible, you get a better quality score, which means essentially you get a cheaper click, which saves you money. Absolutely. And when you're a small business, pennies count. Mm -hmm. 
Tony, let me, let me ask you this. Have you ever used uh, a complementary SEO strategy with your AdWords strategy? One more time. What was that? <laughs> Have you ever used um, uh, a complementary SEO strategy alongside your PPC strategy? So creating content uh, around the terms that you're bidding on and um, as those uh, uh, pages increase in rankings, you pull away a little bit from ads towards uh, SEO. Yes. Yes, I have several clients of mine that we work that, by the end of the day, we want to pull back on their ads. We don't want to spend as much money as possible, as little money as possible on their ads because there still is a very, a lot of people are like, well, we don't click on the ads. Well, you, you do. Google's real sneaky about where they show the ads, but you still want to show up properly underneath the ad space, underneath of the organic results. Uh, even more importantly, if you're a small local business servicing a local area, uh, you want to show up properly in the map pack. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's a form of offsite SEO though. Does Google My Business call it offsite SEO? Or, or is that on, on page SEO for Google My Business? No, that's offsite. That, okay. Well, it was also follows the form of offsite SEO, which it's still important that space is so valuable. And it's and when, when clients put the effort in, they see the free traffic and the free leads coming in. Yeah. Who doesn't want free traffic? No, it's, it's so important. I mean, it, so if you're looking for, you know, I, I work a lot with um, in the behavioral, uh, uh, behavioral uh, space, like mental health, addiction treatment, stuff like that. So um, if somebody searches for therapist near me, for instance, if you're leveraging all of these things, uh, Google ads on page and off page, you're potentially showing up three times on Google ads, map pack, organic SEO results. So by leveraging all of these elements, you're increasing your likeliness to earn that click and then get them to call. That industry is actually excessively difficult because on Google ads, I'm not too sure about the SEO part, but on Google ads, you get, you get ad restrictions for sensitivity. Content. Yeah. That's we can talk about that a, a lot if you want. So I've run a lot of ad campaigns in the addiction treatment space. So you, you need, uh, I don't know if you want to digress there, but That's you need right. what's called a, a legit script certification, which is a very uh, rigorous process. And you need that to even advertise across uh, not just Google, but YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram and Bing uh, as well. Uh, what's very you? regulated uh, industry. <laughs> I know, Bing ads. Yeah, uh, yeah no, I know. <laughs> secret, secret for everybody. Test Bing ads. It's, it's, more effective than you think. Yeah, I, I have two therapists I work with. I have a third one I'm talking to. They just got um, the Google grant certification because they're not nice. Yep. Yeah, they got the ten thousand awesome. a month. And I was like, dude, the first thing we're going to do <laughs> is get your website and everything set up properly because what you were going to hit those restrictions and the way Google is, it's taking forever to get anything fixed because Google's gone downhill because of COVID and their customer service sucks now. But um, actually, in your industry video content and blogging works much better than Google ads is my opinion on it. As much as I love Google ads and, and you do need to use Google social media and SEO and all, and no matter what you're doing, it's how much of it in this particular industry. Um, Google's not the strongest point. No, I totally agree. You know, having, a, uh, and it, it's, it's easier said than done. And that, you know, that's why you hire someone like Tony or myself or another trusted marketer to take all of this off your plate. Uh, but having that multifaceted approach across everything uh, is, is key because some people are going to be on YouTube. Some people are going to uh, be on um, uh, Google search. Some people are going to be on TikTok. Some people are going to be on Instagram, et cetera. And if you learn how to maneuver and manipulate all of those platforms uh, and spread your message, you're reaching everyone everywhere that they're at, uh, staying top of mind. That's another important thing too. So if you keep showing up, depending on the industry, it's not always a one-time sell. You have to keep showing up over and over and over again. And if you keep showing up in front of them on, across multiple platforms, over time, it's going to continue to stack and increase your results. Yes. Well, the key frame here is over time. Um, there's SEO, Google Ads ain't going to work in 30 days. <laughs> I wish. No. Yeah. I wish too. <laughs> That's true. Um, another thing you've been diving into, man, recently is YouTube and YouTube Shorts. Um, yeah, I know you've seen some pretty good success. You pointed out one of my videos randomly got 200 views out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, tell people a little bit more about how you're how you're using your multi platforms. Because you're, you're transitioning, you started on TikTok, right? 
and now you're transitioning to YouTube or have you always had YouTube? Oh, I've always had YouTube. Um, yeah, like I said, I've been doing this for 15 years. I had, you know, platforms across everything. Um, but yeah, what, how we're using our TikTok videos is, uh, particularly in YouTube, it's a very interesting time. So YouTube is launching a new platform called Shorts, which is a direct competitor to TikTok. Um, they've been testing it in India for about six months because uh, TikTok oh. was banned in India. Uh, and YouTube, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's crazy. So um, well, what do you as, know? Soon, <laughs> as soon as they banned it, um, it uh, YouTube launched Shorts uh, because they wanted to capture that gap in the marketplace initially. So they've, that's where they've been uh, beta testing Shorts. But now it's rolling out uh, more and more. And uh, you might have seen this uh, in, uh, if you use YouTube mobile app and you're in um, America, so it's not in every country. Uh, but if you scroll down on the homepage of YouTube on your mobile device, there's a, a section on there that says uh, short videos. That's currently where those videos are being housed. Uh, and if you go on, if you click on one of those, it takes it, it takes you into its uh, individual kind of atmosphere, which is very similar to TikTok. Uh, it's, you know, you're scrolling up and down video to video. You have the option to subscribe to that person right there. Um, how you get in there is having the criteria is 60 seconds or less vertical format. Uh, that's all we know. Uh, they told us in a beta workshop that I attended to use the hashtag shorts. However, I've been doing a lot of research on this and uh, I listen to podcasts and watch channels like vidIQ who do everything YouTube. Uh, they basically have said and tested that you don't even need that hashtag shorts. Anything that is vertical and 60 seconds or less is already eligible. Are you talking about the hashtag? I've been putting it in the title and in the description at the end. Yeah, uh, apparently it doesn't matter. Huh. <laughs> yeah, apparently it doesn't matter. Uh, they did tell us in the in the workshop to do that, uh, to include hashtag shorts in either the title or the description. But apparently videos have been uh, been showing up either. And it's random a little bit. Like you said, you know, uh, it could be all of a sudden uh, you get a spike. You know, maybe 24 hours go by, no views or, you know, a couple of views, depending on how large your YouTube subscriber base is. And then all of a sudden you get a massive spike of, 500, 1,000. Some people have been getting hundreds of thousands of views. Uh, it's more entertainment focused uh, rather than business uh, in, uh, type of videos right now. But um, it's very short lived uh, and they do have uh, an analytics uh, section. Yes. Uh, if you check your beta now that uh, labels the views as shorts. So you can actually see the traction that you get on individual videos uh, over time. Well, so I that's, that's how we're purposing uh, TikTok Shorts. Well, I hope to keep it, and it's cool to be to be to be reusing your your your, your content. Because I tell people, just because they follow you on Facebook doesn't mean they're following you on YouTube. Repurpose your content. Now, a lot of yeah. marketers, Neil Patel talks about that. Um, Gary V talks about that. But repurposing your content all the time because you don't know who's watching where they're at. Yeah, I can't stress the importance of that as much. No. Oh. Yes, sir. So Austin, with that being said, man, please, uh, we're going to wrap this up. Please, um, again, tell people where they can find you, what are your handles, Twitter, and all that fun stuff, uh, on where, um, how they can get a hold of you if they want to contact you for some SEO work, especially there in the, it's the, what's your niche again, the addiction? Yeah, we work with, uh, with everyone. Uh, my expertise is in behavioral health, uh, drug and alcohol addiction, private practice, uh, group therapy. Uh, but because of the success of TikTok, we've been working with a lot of different uh, people. And uh, we've been working with a couple lawyers, um, uh, a, uh, a pond builder, believe it or not, nice. uh, some online retailers, uh, drop shipping stores, you name it. We've been uh, working with everybody. But Tony, it's, uh, it was an absolute pleasure to uh, join you on the podcast today. I'm glad I could do so. Uh, you could check me out, Socialty Pro on TikTok. You can visit my website, socialtypro.com. If you're interested in SEO services for your business, you can email me directly, austin at socialtypro.com. Thanks again, my man. Yes, folks, go follow. Make sure you go follow Austin. Turn on your TikToks, YouTube, wherever you can. Hit them up. And until then, next week, guys, happy marketing. <laughs>